ever in this herd of Thor, the mighty warrior from Norse mythology? But have you heard the story of the time that Thor lost his famous hammer, Mjolnir, and the strange method he used to retrieve it, which included popping on a rather fetching dress? Yes, you did hear correctly. All will be revealed in the tale of Thor and the giant thrill. It was a terrible morning when Thor awoke to find his beloved hammer Mjolnir gone. Panic gripping him, he frantically searched around the room, but to no avail. He was unable to find his most trusted companion. His anger grew and threatened to boil over, rage driving him to tear up the palace in his fruitless search. Concluding that the weapon must truly be missing, he rushed to inform the god Loki, who shared his concern that without the hammer, Asgard was left vulnerable to attack by the giants. Loki was a clever god, and he surmised that given they had the most to gain, it seemed likely that the giants themselves were the culprits behind the theft of Thor's mighty hammer. He took Thor to see the great goddess Freya, and upon hearing the situation, she granted magical feathers to Loki, which would allow him to transform into a falcon and fly quickly across the land to locate the hammer. Taking to the air, Loki decided to follow his instincts and headed directly to the homeland of the giants. Upon his arrival, he changed back into his normal, godly form and approached the chief of the giants, Thrym. Such was the arrogance of the giant chieftain that he didn't even attempt to deny it. Releasing a laugh like a huge, booming thunder, he happily announced it was indeed he who had stolen Mjolnir and informed Loki that it was buried eight miles under the ground. Not to be deterred, Loki attempted to convince Thrym to release the hammer back to him, but was unable to persuade the giant, who made it very clear that he would give back the hammer only if Freya agreed to marry him. Amazed at what he had heard, and sure there was no way he would be able to make such an arrangement, Loki flew back to Asgard and informed Thor and the other gods of his meeting with the giants. They were all enraged by the demand, Freya in particular. Thor dared to suggest she dress herself in a bridal gown and the halls of Asgard shook violently with her anger. It was clear Freya was not willing to play along. It was then that Heimdall suggested that Thor go to Thrym instead, disguised as Freya and wearing the bridal dress himself. Thor protested, of course, claiming it would be a dishonourable and unmanly thing to do, and that he would be mocked forevermore by all of Asgard. Loki was quick to point out, however, that if he refused to attempt it, there would be no Asgard left to mock him anyway. Seeing the wisdom despite his reservations, Thor reluctantly agreed to the plan. No detail was spared in the preparation of Thor's dress, and his costume was completed with a beautiful necklace and veil to cover his face. Loki offered to accompany him as his maidservant in disguise, and so it was that the two gods, masquerading as women, set off to the land of the giants. When they arrived, to their great relief, Thrym was overjoyed that his demand had seemingly been met. He hosted a great feast to celebrate his marriage to Freya. Uncomfortable in his new role, Thor almost gave the game away during dinner, as he single-handedly ate an entire ox, ate salmon, and all of the snacks that had been prepared for the women. Thrym took note and declared that he had never seen a woman with such an appetite. Luckily, Loki was there to rescue the situation, and in the role of the wise handmaid, informed the giant that the fair goddess had been so lovesick for him that she had been unable to eat for days. 
This pleased through him greatly, and he leant over to kiss his bride. Getting closer, however, he now noticed the eyes of Thor disguised as Freya, and was taken aback, declaring, Never have I seen a maiden with such frightfully piercing eyes. Loki once again was on hand, and informed the giant that the goddess had also not been able to sleep for many nights. Such was her longing for him. Overjoyed at the words, Thrym ordered that the great hammer was brought out to hallow their union. At the giant's beckoning, the weapon was placed gently onto the lap of his future bride. A smile creased across Thor's lips, its menace hidden only by the veil of his costume. He felt the warm glow return to him, power coursing through his body once more as he gripped the weapon tightly. Anger surged as he considered the ordeal he had been forced to endure, and as his rage peaked and reached its apex, the Thunder God was complete again. Ripping back his veil and leaping to his feet, Thrym had time only to let out a small gasp of surprise before Thor struck him down with a single blow. Lightning coursed through the room as he set about his work, slaying every giant present and exacting his revenge. Content at last, and with the balance of the universe restored, Thor and Loki set off back to Asgard, where Thor wasted no time changing back into his usual clothes. One of the lesser known tales of Thor, that whilst not necessarily one of great heroism or epic battles, somehow adds another dimension to the legend of the god of thunder. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, it would be great if you could give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Remember to make sure you hit the bell when you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts on the story, or let me know any other great stories you would like to see told in future videos. Thanks again for watching.